السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد ونسلی علیہ رسول کریم اما بعد آل پارٹیسپینٹس اینڈ آل اٹینڈیز ہو آر اٹینڈنگ وائی انٹرنیٹ اینڈ سوشل میڈیا ویلکم ٹو آور ففتھ سیشن آف تسکیہ ورک شاپ ہیئر نیو یارک الحمد للہ وی آر بلیسڈ ٹو ہیو گیدرڈ ان دس in this uh, ceremony of uh, angels and upon which Allah is looking at right now with great pride and with great pleasure just for just to be um, just to make us happy with him Khan Saab has give, delivered a very very passionate and eloquent uh, speech uh, about the paths and the ways which lead us towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I will build upon it and uh, I will talk about the next two points of tasawwuf which are closely related to the, to the paths of Allah, uh, which lead us to the paths of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So point number seven for today, today's workshop is mujahida. And point number eight is uh, service to humanity, khidmat khalq. Um, Mujahada is an Arabic word uh, frequently used in uh, Sufi literature and, you know, uh, in uh, mysticism. Uh, what does it mean? In the simplest terms, it means that uh, you strive against your lower self, against your nafs for religious gain. Your nafs is urging you towards haram, Ill, Ill, illicit, illegal activities, but you are resisting that temptation and you are suppressing those temptations, you are fighting those temptations to improve yourself in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for testing purposes has put فَأَلْحَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Allah Ta'ala has instilled the sentiment of uh, sinful activities in us and also at the same time the sentiments to uh, guard against it and uh, be and purif keep ourselves purified against it. So we have the both urges in, in ourselves. Now uh, how striving against those bad urges help us? This is very important. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا And those who struggle to find our ways, we will definitely show them, uh, show them our ways. What are those ways which lead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the paths that lead to nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Those are the paths of repentance, paths of purification, paths of knowledge, paths of sincerity, servitude. And finally, Allah shows you the paths of marfat towards him. Now here in this beautiful ayat, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing out to the fact that don't go to look for the paths. That is his duty to give you, to show you the paths. What is our duty? Our duty is to struggle within ourselves. That's all. If we start to sincerely struggle for, against ourselves for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is bountiful enough to start showing us all the paths that will lead towards Him. And once and after these avenues towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open up, you start feeling the spiritual awakening that will eventually lead you to see and experience the divine secrets. Uh, Hazrat Ustad Abu Ali Dakak, rahmatullahi he was a great Sufi mystic of his time in Nishapur. Uh, he was well known among his disciples. He used to teach his disciples a very important concept. He used to teach them whosoever beautifies his outer state by mujahada, Allah will beautify his inner state by mushahada. These are those people, these are those saints who have attained nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah has opened their, Allah has opened his divine secrets to them. Now these, you know, good people, these good saints are kind enough to open those secrets to us and they are telling us that if you prepare yourself, if you ready up yourself, to do some struggle against yourself, Allah is going to show you the things which you have never seen, the things that you have never experienced in your life. So our duty is to struggle against ourselves, against, against our inner self, the nafs. So those struggles can be 
categorized into two forms, the struggles against our outer self and the struggle against our inner self. So uh, struggles against our outer state is that we have to uh, prepare ourselves, we have to struggle always to stay in a state of purity, stay in a state of wudu, and stay in a state of cleanliness. Uh, many, many Sufis, many pious people always practice that. They always try to stay in a state of, uh, uh, in a state of wuzu. They have, as soon as their wuzu breaks down, they go and immediately make the refreshed wuzu. Although it is not a time for next salat, but they always try, try to remain in a state of purification. That is required of a Sufi to always stay in a state of wudu. Next, uh, how to struggle against your inner uh, urges to delay, uh, delay other good uh, things in your life. For example, your nafs may uh, some send you lazy signals to delay your uh, five-day mandatory salah, but you stand up, you stand up against it, and you prepare yourself to to offer your five times mandatory salah um, perpetually uh, on time. Similarly, observing one month fast, you prepare yourself and you always stand against your nafs to offer this form of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, regularly. Also, if it is uh, incumbent or if it is mandatory for you to perform hajj and zakat, you don't delay that and you struggle against your nafs to perform these things uh, in a timely manner. And uh, similarly, obey all other commands which are given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the uh, struggles that you have to you have to get yourself ready for uh, for the outer state and for your inner state. Uh, I can summarize that by saying that you can refine your character if you have to struggle against your inner state. By that I mean your nafs may may urge you to do some backbiting. Your nafs may urge you to do some lying or fraud somebody, God forbid, or kill somebody or something like that. But you will resist against those illegal temptations and haram temptations and you will have to shun jealousy, backbiting, arrogance, uh, name calling, fraud and lying and all other evil, evil activities that your, nurge, uh, your, urge, uh, your, your nafs is urging you. So this leads us to the important point that why, why should we do mujahada? What is the purpose of struggling against yourself? Because it's quite a deal to deal with your nafs. You know, it's a very strong uh, compulsion that comes from you inside to, to do haram activities because they, s they look and they sound very pleasing to our eyes, to our ears, to our nafs. But uh, there's a lot of destruction hidden in those haram urges. That's why it is very important for us to resist against it. But uh, uh, so that is one purpose that you, when you s start conquering your illegal, illogical urges and you submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you start to purify your soul. And in other words, you are getting your soul ready to receive that divine light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second purpose of mujahada or struggling is that it will prepare you to start practicing good in your life. Once you have gotten a command over your nafs and you have sort of subdued your nafs, now, now what? Just staying calm, staying quiet is not enough. You have to build upon your efforts and you have to start taking action. That leads us to the next point, uh, which is just attached to Mujahida, is the Riyazat, is the practice and the training. <coughs> we will talk about it in a little bit. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that this Mujahida is very dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In many points in Quran Majid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised these people who are constantly struggling. Uh, in, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will recite few words, verses that will you know, highlight and delineate uh, the importance of, uh, uh, of mujahada and struggling in, the, in, the, in, in your life. <coughs> تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَدَاجِئِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفٌ وَتَمَعًا at another point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَهْجَعُونَ وَبِلَسْحَارِهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ at another point, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا In all these beautiful verses, Allah is urging us by admiring those people who are constantly striving and struggling 
to attain nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you start to struggle against yourself, it's, it will be Allah's duty to show you the paths towards him. Don't go out, don't start to go out, look for the paths of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Start within yourself. Start and struggle against yourself. Allah's duty will be there to guide you on, that, on those paths. Now coming to the second part of this point, which is Riyazat. Riyazat means practicing or training yourself. So once you have uh, sort of gained control over the nafs and now you are ready to build up on it, what should you do? Because, you know, any, anything uh, gets perfect by practicing it. Practice makes a man perfect. If you, if you learn something and if you, if you don't practice it, you will learn that art or skill. So, how will you skill, how, uh, what should we do to bring it in our practices? All the good deeds, good amal, good, um, good deeds that can bring us uh, uh, near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will come through... Uh, I mean, you have already uh, achieved the mindset that you are going to guard against your nafs. Now, next point, it will be to start adopting the practices. Of course, you have to uh, contact a teacher of, uh, of spirituality who will guide you what actions to undertake in your life. You know, the, uh, every, every person is different. Everybody's needs are different. Just like you go to school, just like you go to hospital, everybody's needs are different and they are treated accordingly. So the actions uh, that you are going to take, you should take under the guidance of a teacher. You should not start taking actions just by yourself that can mislead you. And the, the importance of, uh, uh, of uh, constant practice is very important. You know, according to one hadith, uh, the, the meaning of which is that whenever a person makes a dua and that dua reaches the skies, it filters through the angels first. So angels try to recognize that voice. And if they recognize the voice, uh, uh, they, they, they talk among themselves that this sounds like a familiar voice. Uh, we have heard him doing zikr and duas in the past. And they rush that dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on the other hand, if a person who has not practice dua and zikr and other things in his life, he gets in trouble and then he makes some dua. So that dua also ascends the skies, it reaches the angels, angels discuss about it and they, uh, they sort of uh, give disapproval and they, they, they say, uh, we haven't heard about this voice, this looks very strange. Where is this coming from? I never heard of, we, ne we never heard of this voice before. So this is the importance of Riyazat, that if you keep practicing, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will make you familiar among angels. And they will rush your zikr, askar and duas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very fast manner. That's what we want, right? We want instant results. So if you want instant results at the time of need, you have to be constantly engaged in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing all the good, good things that are required of you. Uh, there are certain treatments prescribed in, in, the form of, uh, in the form of practice and training. For example, if somebody is a stealer, you know, this is a bad habit, everybody knows in the world. Uh, he can be prescribed to go out and give in the path of Allah, do a lot of charity, you know. So he is taught to give out, instead of stealing from others, go give out people, so in the form of charity. So he will be treated by Sheikh by prescribing different treatments. So this is one treatment. Uh, now he has to remain steadfast on it. If he wants to shun bad activities, he has to adopt the good uh, which is taught by his Sheikh. If somebody is indulging in overeating, it is a very bad habit, uh, biologically, spiritually, and in every sense, it is a bad habit. And if, you, if somebody wants to shun this activity, he has to start fasting, and it is prescribed by Sheikh. Similarly, if somebody is indulging in oversleeping, that's another bad habit. That is wasting a lot of your time, uh, very precious time is lost in oversleeping. So, Again, your sheikh will come in handy and he will guide you how to avoid uh, oversleeping and how to limit the hours of sleep. So this is, again, uh, this riyazat comes to in your life uh, so that you can improve yourself. 
Similarly, if somebody has problem of arrogance, he is very proud and arrogant uh, and has a behavior problem uh, and has a attitude and behavioral problems, he, will be, he, he may be ordered to go out and serve other people, serve in the community so that his, he attains some humbleness. So these are some of the uh, salient features of Riyazat in which you adopt uh, good activities to counter your bad activities and you remain steadfast on it. It is just like in the worldly affairs, if somebody has alcohol addiction or drug addiction, he goes out and seek treatment, right? He doesn't just leave it alone. He just seek treatment uh, and he is taught to how to stop alcohol usage or drug usage and then he gets treatment from the specialist. Similarly, we are here to learn from the specialist of spirituality, our sheikh, uh, how, to, how to adopt riyazats in our life according to our needs. Point number eight of the Savuf is khidmat khalq which is serving humanity. This is a very wide topic which is very open with many different aspects uh, involved in it and it's a beautiful concept and it is one of, one of the core competencies of Islamic religion. It's a beautiful pillar of Islam which uh, connects uh, which connects us to our fellow human beings. This is not a desire of Allah and Allah has never required us to just be connected with Him and ignore His uh, creation. Allah wants us to be connected to Allah Himself and His creation at the same time. So that is why we are required to dedicate our time uh, in, a, in, a, in a very natural way possible so that we uh, dedicate some time to serving our hum humanity also. Uh, what are the benefits of serving humanity? First of all, it creates a balance in your life. You know, you just don't completely ignore uh, the humanity in which you're living in and you're just not only attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is never the, the, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wants us to be uh, connected with both, with the, create, with the creator and the creation. So, basically you are fulfilling the rights of Allah and his creation. Secondly, Serving humanity will bring humbleness in your life, which is a big thing. Without being humble, you cannot achieve much. When, whether, whenever you start serving humanity in your capacity, you will start getting that humility and humbleness, which is one of the core competencies of Islamic uh, spirituality. Third, is the, it's the fastest way to achieve nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes people are indulged in their worship worshipping and they are their worshipping is not uh, accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as fast as their service to humanity. There are many examples and instances in which a person was doing lots of lots of ibadat uh, but it was not accepted in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but as soon as he did something to the humanity to please them and to help them out Allah became so happy with them that they accepted all his worshipping also. So serving humanity should not fall by our wayside, it should always be our top priority. Uh, why serve humanity? There is another, uh, there is another beautiful aspect to that. In one of the narrations, uh, it, say, it comes uh, that Allah will ask some people on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment, that I was sick on that particular day, why did you not come and visit me? To some people he will ask, I was hungry on that particular day, why did you not come and feed me? So those people will be very confused and they will ask, Ya Allah, how can you be sick? How can you be hungry? How can you be in need? At that Allah will reply them that my such and such person was sick on that day, you did not go and visit him. If you had gone visited him, you would have found me over there. My, my such and such person was hungry, if you had gone and feed, fed him, you would have found me over there. So this is the importance of serving humanity that it's the very fast and quick way to attain nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is right there next to the person who is in need of something. And if you go and meet up with his need, that's, that's your luck and you are fortunate enough. So this beautiful hadith gives us a very important concept that please don't forget your, uh, your humanity, your communities, your, um, your, your surroundings just because you are so busy doing the zikr and worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dedicate your time 
equally or in a fair manner so that you know all aspects are covered. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ability to serve our communities um, and be beneficial to our communities. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.